Hey folks, Rich Burdess here from Brighter Days in Christchurch with a tutorial clip on how to send multiple attachments from SharePoint via Outlook uh, in Office 365 using the attachments control. So I had a, a request from Marco, so this one's going out to you mate, so let's spin this up. So if you've been following the series on this already, we have um, a couple of sites, and this is going to be slightly off the screen, so let's move that across, but I've got... Uh, a list of my students with different emails okay and then I've got a this time I've got a list of uh, do that again that's awesome isn't it um, a list of library items um, and there's a mix of different students so basically we've mapped the student email against the student in the list okay so that's just the main thing to remember um, so there's multiple attachments or only a single attachment for that bright days one but that's gonna come through so I'll show you how that works. All right, let's jump into the flow. So I want to do, uh, this one's just an instant flow. I'm going to run it on a manual trigger. Um, let's just call it that uh, for the moment. So we've got a manual trigger. First thing we need to set up is an array. So type in an array, go for variable, or if it shows up there for you, but basically we're going to initialize a variable first of all. So initialize, call it You can call it what you like. Just make sure you change from boolean to array. You don't need a value in there to start off with. Okay, next thing we're going to do is get our items from SharePoint. And so this is the list, the main SharePoint list from the site that I've got set up. And this is all in my technology demo site. And it's just a list called my students. Um, don't need to worry about any of the filters there, so that's fine. We'll leave that. Okay, then I'm going to do another action. It's going to be get files. This is where we're going to jump into the other list, or the other library. Um, but when we do it, we're going to find um, that Power Automate will put us into a apply to each um, loop anyway, right? So let's go into the technology site, uh, into the document library. And then I'm going to expand the advanced, so show hide, show advanced options. And what I'm going to do here is just type in my query in O data. So slightly different syntax to regular SharePoint, but student email. Move my mouse out of the way. And then EQ for equals. And then put a little inverted speech mark in there. And it's get items from the previous step. And I just want um, title. And so my column in SharePoint is called student email and I'm going to get the title so what I always find here is it kind of closes out and they end up missing off the final inverted comma off the top there so I'll quickly save that okay so with that step complete we can move on to the next action and then basically what we're going to do is another apply to each inside this step so click add action and this one is get file content So scroll down to get file content, click that. Okay, it's going to ask you where we're coming from again. So it's the same process. Navigate into your SharePoint library and then select the file. So from here, what I want to do is select my file. I'm going to use the, if I scroll down a little bit, the identifier. So I've got get files and actually if you just type in identifier or ident, um, under your dynamics, so under get files, which is a step before that, you'll find identifier. That's the one you want, and that will automatically loop it into a second apply to each. And then inside this apply to each is where all the excitement's going to happen. Now, I was messing around with this earlier and I found that it was safer for me to put a compose step in to get the file name. Um, if I didn't put this step in, so compose, um, if, you, if you haven't used compose before, um, really cool little um, action where you can just um, drop in any text value that you want. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the file name so with the extension, because my email is gonna want a file name with extension. So I can still use the get files properties and I can drop that into here. So this is gonna be basically a, a little placeholder variable or local. It's not a variable, it's more of a um, string component we can use. So I get that. Um, and then the next step I'm gonna do is going to build an array, oh, I'm going to extend, sorry, append my array. So I just type in append, you'll find a string or array, 
if I do variable again, you'll see that you've got append to array variable, append to string. So you're going to want append to array variable. All right. So first thing you do there is select your variable, which is the one we created at the start. And then the syntax for the variable, we need to open it up with a squiggly speech mark or squiggly, sorry, squiggly bracket. Um, and then we're going to close it with that as well. And then I need to put two things in here. So the name of the file. So inside speech marks, name, colon, and then I'm going to put in this compose moment. So that basically that step is coming in here, and then a comma. And then for my file content, I actually have to call it content, oops, content bytes. Okay, so just remember that content bytes is what you want. Another colon, and then this is where we are going to take the file content. So over on this side, so we're taking the file content from this action here. Um, just type in content or con however you want, but get the get file content action and file content. That's what you want. Okay. So when you've got all that, we're just about done. And then outside of this, apply to each. This is going to going to build an array of our content, and we're going to do down in here. We're going to send an email to my people. So this email, select send an email. Um, and so I'm going to send this to the student. Um, so I'm going to add dynamic content, so the two. Um, and that's for the title. Oops, if I can spell title right. So for my get items, title is the name where my email ad uh, address is held. That could be something else. We'll just match it to whatever you want. Um, here be attachments, if I could spell that. Um, OK, and so to attach your files, you want to extend the show advanced options. <coughs> Excuse me. And when you do that, you're going to get this regular kind of, you know, select your attachments. Um, but if you don't know how many attachments you're going to have, or it could be variable, you want to use this little guy on the right here. So switch the to input entire array. Click that. And then you get a single box uh, for your field. One second. And so when you've got that selected, you can click inside it. And then because you've already created an, a variable with which is an array, just select the um, attachment for that. Okay, so we're still doing that inside this apply to each. So we are still going one student at a time in the first apply to each. And then for each student, we're finding, getting all the files for the student. And then we are inside of that file um, loop. We're grabbing the details of each file. And then we're building up an array of the content that we want. And then we are going to push that into our CentOS student. And then we're going to put in the attachments array, which is going to have our name and our content bytes. That's all we need to do. And let's make it a high importance email. Um, save. Oh, body. Hang on with your body. Excuse me. Yeah, be body. All right. Save that. And now we'll test it, pick it off. Sometimes it'll take a second to kick itself up. And there we go. Continue, run flow. Done. So we kicked it off, we've initialized the array, we've gone and got the items from our SharePoint li list, which has all our students in it. And then for each student that we find, we're going into um, a document library called Documents. And we're grabbing files that match the student email against it and then we're sending an email to show you what that looks like inside of things so each file which should show up in our compose statement so yeah we've got some cleverly named files um, here so it's got the pdf so it's good to have you need to have the file extension um, so the outlook will recognize the type of file and then for each of these guys we're putting them into um, the attachment control so we can see the the content types got a, um, a pdf if I go back to um, one that's not a PDF, like a Word doc, so you can see that's a docx, and we've got the open XML format coming in for an Office document, and then this is all the content, um, you know, the, the, the encoded um, version of what the file content actually is, and then the email was sent, and if I open up my email over here and drag one over, we go, oh, it's a bit big, isn't it? Um, there we go. So that email has just come through uh, with my attachments in it. So I, I could have multiple attachments or not too many, um, but it's going to work out 
what content needs to be in the email and send that through. So Marco, I hope that has helped. I know it was pretty quick, um, but just pause it, watch it, pause it, um, do what you need to do, and hopefully that will help you get through your um, being able to send multiple attachments to each of your students in your environment. Good luck, mate. Bye.